Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to take a look at something really, really cool. Uh, this book was printed uh, by Panini Press. And I have a lot of their stuff um, because I've bought comics from other countries and other editions of comics, you know, uh, comics written in different languages and stuff. Sometimes I like a comic so much that I just want almost every edition of it and I'll spend the extra money to get them. I don't have a ton of stuff from Panini, but I have some things from Panini. And this, when I saw this online, I was blown away. I was just randomly going through Amazon. All right, I have like a $15 credit, but I also have some cash on me or some money in my account. Uh, let's see if we can find something for around 25 bucks uh, that is Venom related that I could do a review on for the show in between, you know, doing the, the last two trade paperbacks. So last week, obviously, we went through Along Came a Spider and then maybe this week or probably push it to next week, uh, we'll go through the Tooth and Claw graphic novel the best I can. And then we'll, you know, before Absolute Carnage, if I can, you know, I'll do my best. We got a lot, I got a lot to cover and uh, very little time to do it. And especially with work, my supervisor is gone, which essentially puts me in charge for the week and that's going to be a really hectic week for me coming up so i'm going to do my best and uh, keep up with stuff the best i can but at least for this week i was like if, even if i only do one venom vlog it has to be about this book so i ordered it it was only 20 bucks i think normally it's 17.99 in pounds if you buy it in the uk uh, but that's mainly where it was released it was never released in the united states so someone in the u.s on the east coast had a copy of this in a great condition uh, and then just sold it to me for $22. So a uh, big thank you. I was at the book depository. Just had, a, I guess, a copy or two of these laying around. And they just sold it for the price that it would sell for in the U.S. So $17.99 in pounds. You know, a couple extra bucks, I guess. In, uh, or maybe it should be been less. I don't know. But $22 wasn't bad either way, considering what it is. Uh, this is called the Marvel Platinum, Defin or Marvel Platinum The Definitive Venom. Uh, and I think we may have talked about this a long time ago. I think I saw some article about this at one point saying this was coming out uh, in 2000. I think it came out in 2018 or maybe it came out in 2019. I can't remember. Or I think it came out around the time of the movie. Uh, but it's, yeah, it says here, The Definitive Venom. And this was only printed uh, outside the U.S. Uh, these, this is a series of books that they do uh, in, in the U.K. from Panini Press. And they're called MP, Marvel Platinum. And essentially what it is, is it's a collection of, of like the history of a character. So they just put in like 13 or 14 issues uh, from that character's history and uh, to help you get a sense of who that character is. So they have like a Spider-Man one of this and then they have like a Captain America or an Iron Man and Avengers one. And then for, uh, you know, for the movie, I guess for Venom, they did a Venom one. And I'm so glad that they did. And the downer though was that it just never released here in the US. And then I completely, I think we talked about it, but even if, if we did, I completely forgot about it. Um, and uh, and so when I saw this, I was like, all right, let's go check it out. I went everywhere online looking for a review of this. I saw one printed review and that was it. On YouTube, I couldn't find anybody who did like an in-depth video on this book at all. I saw them review other definitive uh, character books, but not Venom. And I was like, well, I got to order it then. That's going to be where my, my credit goes and my, the, you know, the, some, the little bit of cash I have to pay the extra. And I'm going to get this book. And that's what I did. And I've been waiting for like 10 days and it finally came in. So I'm very excited. So as you can see, they put a lot of people down here. Like There's a list of a ton of names. And on the back here, I'll just read the back for you so you kind of get an idea here. It says, years ago, thinking he was donning a new costume, Peter Parker, a.k.a. the Amazing Spider-Man, accidentally bonded with a symbiotic alien. When Peter realized that the costume was actually a living organism seeking to dominate him, he rejected it, leaving the creature feeling betrayed and alone on a foreign world. During their time together, however, the symbiote had access to Spider-Man's genetic code and, as a result, can now grant whomever it bonds with powers similar to those of its first host, the wall crawler, the power to generate bioorganic webbing and unique abilities to shapeshift and turn invisible. Together, host and symbiote are Venom. Marvel Platinum proudly presents the very best tales of the House of Ideas' deadliest antihero, Venom, including the events that led to his startling first appearance and some of his greatest battles in his long-running vendetta with everyone's favorite wall crawler, Spider-Man. And then you get some cool Bagley art on the back there. Looks really awesome. Um, and it says, also discover how Eddie Brock has not been the only host of Venom symbiote as we chronicle one of the darkest periods of the uh, petrifying parasite's existence when it is bonded with Matt Gargan, a.k.a. the Scorpion, joins Norman Osborn's Dark Avengers and becomes the sinister Spider-Man. Plus, the Venom symbiote enters a new age as it joins with disabled ex-soldier Flash Thompson, becoming the U.S. Army's latest super soldier, Agent Venom. 
Lastly, the monstrous tale of Venom coming back full circle as Thompson loses the symbiote and it returns to its true host, Eddie Brock. The lethal protector is reborn. So this book collects Marvel Superhero Secret Wars number 8, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 252 and 258, uh, and issue 300 of Amazing Spider-Man, 361, see, 362, and 363, which are the, the origins of Carnage, uh, three, uh, issue 654 of Amazing Spider-Man, which I think is the uh, first Flash Thompson uh, prelude storyline, Web of Spider-Man number 1, number 10, and 24 of that book, Web of Spider-Man, Dark Reign, the Sinister Spider-Man number 4, which we've talked about on the show. A lot of these we've already talked about on the show, so we're not going to go that deep because we've already covered most of this stuff, um, but I will flip through the book here in a second. Um, we also have Venom number 150 and Venom number 6 from the, you know, the recent runs. So, yeah, I mean, that's a lot in here. You know, that's a lot of books. Uh, let's see. That's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 comics in here uh, for the price of $22. That is not bad. Like I said, in pounds, it's $17.99. But, uh, yeah, and there's this great, great forward here uh, by Brady. Um, and that's it. it just says Brady and then uh, but it has like, some Bagley artwork in there too um, and then boom yeah you start off with Secret Wars and you get the you know the invasion storyline with by Mike Zek um, and then Spider-Man you know wearing the costume for the first time which let's let's flip to that because um, uh, yep boom right there big moment you know Thor and Hulk are like hey there's a a room in there there's like a machine that fixes your costume and they went in and he accidentally went over to the wrong machine and let loose a symbiote <laughs> that bonded with him uh oh peter parker your luck is just terrible even on another planet uh then 252 was essentially like when we first kind of in continuity saw the the spider-man costume like the black costume uh so this is when he like comes out of the chamber you know coming back from earth it's called homecoming and he comes out and he's holding dr kirk connors after having saved him and turning him back into kirk connors because he was the lizard when they were on battle world and stuff so uh yeah so it has that storyline and then it has um the 258 which is where peter's having the dream and the suits you know like is starting to take over and stuff and he, he finally gets rid of the suit um and then it has like a hobgoblin story in there but that's when he runs around as the amazing bag head man uh you know so yeah a lot of the stuff we've covered we talked about in detail web of spider-man number one i think that was when he decided to make a cloth version so at the end of uh, 258 you see the suit being held by the fantastic four and it's in its chamber um and you know we've read some great stories where uh, that were like side stories to that and then you know the follow-up stories to that so then yes peter gets the suit it comes back on him uh, after it escaped and he has to deal with it again and then he's you know trying to remove it get rid of it and that's when he goes he's fighting the vulture guys and then he that's when he goes to the bell tower and uh, uses the bells from the church to rip the suit off and of course that's when the suit goes down uh, it actually saves peter parker's life we talked about that in our review of this issue um, and then that's when it eventually the sound drove it so crazy knocked it away and it found eddie brock waiting down in the church praying uh thinking about committing suicide so uh yeah and then that's this you know we jumped to issue 300 by todd mcfarlane and that's where mary jane is scared venom paid her a visit peter's in the cloth black costume and you know she he finds out that the suit is still alive and it's attached to someone else and then he finds out it's eddie brock and the two of them get into a big fight um so yeah and then of course he you know fights him at the church again and then at the end the fantastic four show up and help him separate or, or at least capture eddie brock with the suit so all this stuff we've covered, you know, this is all fun, fun, uh, you know, to look down memory lane. We've obviously done all the Carnage stuff, the Savage Genesis. Uh, we're going to do Carnage Month, you know, or not even month, the summer of Carnage coming up soon because Absolute Carnage starts in a week from today, actually, a week from tomorrow. Uh, so very exciting stuff. I know a lot of you guys are very excited for that book. Um, and then, yeah, we have, you know, Spider-Man going over his history of how he got rid of the suit and then where Carnage, you know, how they find out where Carnage came from. And, uh, and then they, you know, have to go battle him. So he has Human Torch helping him out they go to the island where eddie brock is to recruit him to bring him back to help him fight carnage uh, and then they double you know double cross eddie brock so um so yeah you get all those issues in there 
And then it, after the Carnage storyline, it jumps ahead. You get the Dark Rain, Sinister Spider-Man. And I love this. I mean, we talked about this book already, written by Brian Reed and Chris uh, Bacala, who did the artwork. But the way they do that, he's like, me and Redeemer and uh, His Honor, Normie, Jerk, and Emo Wolverine. So Jerk is Bullseye, and Emo Wolverine is uh, is uh, Deken, you know, Wolverine's son or something. So yeah, and then we already talked about this book where he's trying to be like a hero as Spider-Man in the Dark Avengers. You know, like he's it's Matt Gargan, the Scorpion, but he's running around with the look of spider-man but every now and again he loses control and he looks a lot like venom and starts you know eating people and biting their arms off and stuff so uh yeah pretty fun even that little shot at the end there where the poodle is stuck in his eye uh and he has to like you know pull the poodle out um so yeah it's it's a fun book i really like sinister spider-man as you saw in my review but then it cuts to uh, issue 654 of amazing and you get to see your flash thompson storyline right there and so, uh, so you get your, you know, kind of introduction into him and what he's been doing. Project Rebirth, you know, kind of in a new way. Uh, Project Venom, I guess we're going to find out that it has, you know, it's been around for a while since Vietnam. And so, uh, so we're going to see more of that. You get to see for the first time, you know, he has lost his legs, uh, but the suit and the symbiote wrap around his knee and then create legs for him. So we're going to get into Eddie Brock. We're going to, I mean, uh, Eddie Brock, Flash Thompson. We're going to finish the Eddie Brock 90s stuff. We only got one more trade paperback to go and then maybe like a couple other one-offs that we're going to talk about and talks and stuff. So all that stuff we're going to finish before episode 450, before this season ends. And then we'll come back with 451, which will be the start of season four, and possibly our last season with Venom comic book history. Because once we finish, we'll go through Flash Thompson, and then his run is in the Thunderbolts, his run in Guardians of the Galaxy, and then eight, you know, and then when he was like Space Venom or whatever that was called. Uh, once we get through those. We're done. We've caught up to the Lee Price stuff, and we've already gone over most of that on the show before. I mean, some of it we haven't, so we'll touch on it. But uh, but yeah, most of it. So season four will probably be the last season where we actually talk about Venom history because we'll have gone through you know all of it, and we'll have gone through the you know the the cartoons by then by by end of season four, and we'll have gone through the video games. We'll have done it all, and so uh, and even like some of the one-offs and alternate reality versions of him. We're gonna talk a lot about that in season four. So we're gonna get through all that stuff, and by issue or episode. 600 of this show we're going to hopefully the second movie will be coming out and we'll have already finished all the uh you know the history of venom so after that after we're done with history of venom then this show just pretty much just goes back to it just goes to being movie news after that and then reviewing the newest comics that come out so we won't be pumping out episodes like crazy like we have been um we'll be slowing down big time at that point and i don't know i may even end the show i was thinking about ending at at issue or episode 666 uh, unless they announce a venom 3 movie then of course we're going to keep it going so anyway so that just i'm just thinking long term but obviously plans always change and stuff so uh but we'll get into this flash thompson stuff next season so don't worry you know all you flash thompson fans out there we're going to go through all of his books every run any book he's ever been in as venom we're going to talk about it um so we get that then we get uh, venom issue uh, 150 here which is uh you know tells the story of lee price you get a little bit of lee price you also get flash thompson kind of losing the suit you know and it getting away from him and how the government got it back and stuff um and then you know and how uh, how it ends up to, in lee price's hands uh, and then how it from there goes to eddie brock so we do get one issue of lee price here and then how he gets beaten and taken uh spider-man dupes him and dupes the suit and lowers the suit away and we'll go into that and we'll review that you know in season four um but then in the back here so then yeah and then the book ends with eddie brock once again being venom and then in the back you get these great dossiers venom eddie brock uh you know here and then you get uh, so two pages or four pages of him venom matt gargan uh you get Ve agent Ve agent anti-venom uh, over here with flash thompson uh but they don't really touch on some of the other hosts i guess but uh you know, they don't do a page on Lee Price or anything, but they do go through and do like a, a true origin of Venom. And they kind of recount all the stuff in there. Um, and this is all, of course, before the Donny Kate stuff. I think there might have been a mention of Noah. I was like flipping through trying to figure that out. I think there might be a mention of that, of like as stuff that's happening now. But uh, for the most part, this is, you know, all the history of Venom up until, you know, the Mike Costa run. So, uh, so it doesn't really... Uh, you know, count for Noel and all those things. Uh, but still, it's a fun book. It's awesome if you're out there and you can find it for less than 25 bucks. I would say it's worth every penny. I mean, look how thick this book is. Like I said, you get 14 comics in it. And even though we have a lot of these, you know, reprinted and other things, and we've covered a lot of them on the show, it is nice to have one solid book with everything, like all of this in it and showing you 
the the history of Venom, you know, in the best way they could. I mean, there's a couple little chapters in here that I know some of us would have liked them to put in here, but this also came out right around the time they printed Dark Origin in trade paperback for the first time, and I think Planet of the Symbiotes. So technically, if you bought this with those two books, you have a pretty good solid Venom uh, understanding and collection here. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say pick it up if you can, if you can find it anywhere. Uh, it is still in print, it's still available out there. But like you said, you got to go through Panini or you got to go through somewhere online like eBay or Amazon or some, you know, Panini in the UK to order the book. But uh, yeah, if you can find it, it's worth it. Pick it up. The Definitive Venom right here from Marvel Platinum. Thank you all so much for watching the show. I appreciate everything. I love the support that you guys gave me last week. We talked about Andy Serkis possibly being you know, the, the director for the next Venom movie. That would be very exciting, even if it's Travis Knight or Rupert Wyatt. Any one of those, I think the, the movie's in good hands. And uh, it looks like Sony really wants to get this thing done and, and in front of the camera in November. Apparently, they got a script that they've been working on from Kelly Marcel, and I'm guessing it's it's punched up to the point where they're excited about it and they want to get the movie made and probably with scheduling and stuff. So Tom probably, you know, has a window and he's like, I got to do it in this window or else, you know, we might have to, you might have to lose me, uh, not to the sequel. He'll probably still do it, but we're about to push it back. And knowing Sony, they're gonna be like, no, we need to make money off this thing uh, sooner than later. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think, you know, we'll get more news on the sequel, I'm sure, very, very soon. So uh, I'll cover all that when it happens. Uh, but let me know what you think of this, what you think of this book. Let me know down below. Was there a story in here that's one of your favorites? If so, let me know down below and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.